Hey, Viking fans, this is Keith Millard, and you are listening to the One Bar and Lupicus Show. Go Vikes! All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lupagus Show. I am One Bar with Lupagus, and today we are talking about the Vikings' top five secret weapons of 2021. The only thing that worries me about this video is if uh, we let the secret out. Everyone's going to catch on. We're going to let secrets out, and uh, just a little backstory here. Lupagus and I used to be uh, in Little League together, and I was a dominant pitcher, and Lupagus always thought he was the secret weapon, but whenever he came in the pitch... We got spanked. No, I was throwing no hitters, and uh, you were lobbing it down the middle. That is not true. Yeah, for strikes, <laughs> Greg Maddox style. No. Let's do this. Let's do this. Hashtag 4,000. And in the comments, let us know who your secret weapon is for the Vikings. Remember, secret weapon doesn't have to be a guy that's going to put up 1,000 yards. This is a secret weapon. This is a secret weapon. A guy who maybe uh, will score some key touchdowns at certain spots. Maybe it's not even on offense. Maybe it's on defense, or maybe it's somewhere else altogether. It's All right, so, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the honor, Your Honor. Well, before we uh, hop into this, be sure to drop hashtag 4,000 in the comments. We're so close. It smells glorious. It smells like a perfectly toasted grilled cheese. I was just going to say that. A nice buttery grilled cheese. Who's your Hell first yeah. secret weapon? My first secret weapon is wide receiver, Amir Smith, Marset, the rookie. Uh, I, is it, can we call him a phenom yet? I don't know if we no. can call him a phenom Jeez, no, or not. No, call him that. But Amir Smith Marset, someone's got to take on the you know the wide receiver three role. He's the healthiest right now. He showed a little bit in the preseason, so I think he could have a role as an X factor in the offense. You know, it might only be three catches a game, but maybe he takes one of those to the house, has a big gain or something like that. Takes the top off a of defense. He's got some speed. He's got some wheels, and he's definitely dripping with swagger. And you got to look at him as a kick returner. Very, very happy with what I saw, especially his last couple of games. He's got some wiggle to him. He, he knows how to find an open spot when he's returning the football. So, near Smith Marset, special teams, offense, he's a secret weapon. Yeah, and where we differ here is I think his secret weapon is strictly on special teams. I don't think he's going to get many sniffs out there as far as wide receiver early. But kickoff return, he is second all time Big Ten with 28.7 career average returning those kicks. And he had, he had 53 kicks. So, uh, that's. That's saying something. I expect our uh, return game to be light years ahead of last year. And Smith Marset is why, and he is our Hell secret yeah. weapon. Mm. All yeah. right, next up, uh, let's. Mm, all right, let's let's go to special teams. Let's go with our brand new punter, Jordan freaking Barry. And you're probably wondering, secret weapon of punter? Are you kidding me? Damn right. He is on this list, and the, the whole reason he is our secret weapon is field position. 23 punts inside the 20-yard line last year compared to Colquitt's 11 last year. 11, and they had the same amount of punts. So Jordan Berry, he's got a big old hog of a leg on him, and he is going to be able to put that thing down. And, and this wasn't a fluke. He does it consistently every year where he's in 20 to 30 um, punts a year inside the 20. So that is going to be big time, especially for our brand new defense that should be much improved. So Jordan Berry. Uh, uh, uh. That's secret what I was just going to say. The reason it's so such a secret weapon is because of our defense. How good our D-line should be, how improved our secondary should be. You get offensive offenses pinned inside the 20. It's going to be hard for them to get out of there. Uh, it should result in them punting back and getting excellent field position for the Vikings offense. So yeah, definitely a secret weapon just from that field position perspective and with their improved defense, it should, you know, it's going to turn this whole thing around. All right, let's go to another wide receiver secret weapon. Brand new Viking. We haven't seen anything of him yet, but we've seen some things that he's done in the past. And that's D.D. Westbrook. Yeah, I mean, this guy has been a productive receiver in Jacksonville. Uh, the Vikings need another pass catcher, especially, you know, with Irv Smith being out now, Tyler Conklin, we're not sure is he 100% healthy or not. Herndon's going to need some time to kind of acclimate to the offense so they need someone to fill that wide receiver three role just you know as a pass catcher number three i shouldn't even say wide receiver number three so if dd westbrook is truly healthy ready to step in he can be that veteran option knows how to get open in a defense find those open zones and then you look at him as the punt returner which he's going to have that role um dd westbrook experienced hell of a punt returner and again something the vikings haven't had an experienced guy back to returning punts well and we haven't had a really number three either and we haven't used a number three looking back at the last three years 2018, our number three wide receiver had 35 receptions, Laquan Treadwell. 2019, our th number three receiver had 31 receptions with BC. And last year, Chad Beebe, our third receiver, 20 receptions. So with Irv Smith out, D.D. Westbrook, I think, will be our number three. I don't care if we haven't seen much of him at all. And I expect 
easily to top those numbers and be much more heavily involved than we've seen in the past few years at wide receiver three. So that's why he is our secret weapon. Let's go to defense. Damn it. Yeah, let's go to defense. Let's go to, uh, you know, he got his number back 97. He's back. He's hungry. He's eating some nuts. It's Everson Griffin. Um, we saw him in the brief time he played in the chiefs game. This guy's got plenty of fire left in the tank. He's looking to, uh, I think he's a little bit, I don't say embarrassed, but he's got a chip on his shoulder. He bounced around from Dallas to Detroit or vice versa to camera, which was first. He gets cut. I know it was part of the procedures, but still, this is a guy who has been a very, very great player in the league. Kind of getting that ego checked here the last couple of years. I think he's going to come out hungry, come out firing, and even if he plays a handful of snaps a game, he's got a chance to uh, make the most of those, and uh, I think Everson Griffin is going to look damn good this year. Yeah, before Everson Griffin was just a straight-up weapon. Now he's a secret weapon where he's going to be getting on the field in very uh, specific times of the game, third down, just let him go after – after that quarterback, and regardless of what his numbers end up being, whether he has four sacks, whether he has five, six, seven sacks, that's not going to matter because he's going to be pressuring the quarterback, and that is going to be huge. And Everson Griffin, Daniel Hunter out there, uh, is going to be a thing of beauty. Yeah, and it's going to keep the other guys fresh. You know, part of this rotation, uh, I mean, O-lines, they're never going to get a break with these guys constantly coming at them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a deep D-line, and Everson Griffin – I love him. Fresh legs late in the fourth quarter. Everson Griffin, that's going to be amazing. Maybe not so fresh. Oh, he'll be pretty fresh. He'll, he'll be pretty stink, fresh. He'll be fresh. His legs will uh, be fresh. Let's round this off with the player that we just gave up a fourth round pick for. Do new tight end Chris Herndon, which seems like there's a Vikings fans are pretty torn. Either they love it or they hate it. But uh, fact is, he's a pretty damn good tight end. Uh, very athletic and has that. Scary word people like to say untapped potential. He does 6'4, 253 pounds, very athletic. Um, you know, he just hasn't put together that that full season as a starter 12 games in 18. He missed all of 19, 13 games last year starting. So, never been a true, you know, full season starter just like Irv Smith was. But you like what he can do from an athletic standpoint. It's going to take him a little bit to get up to speed with the offense. So I wouldn't expect any production of him until maybe week week three at the best but um if he stays healthy and builds a rapport with Kirk Cousins Chris Hernan could have a very productive year for the Vikings yeah Hernan's just been in Jets hell uh in 2019 before his suspension and injury him and Sam Darnold that was all the talk that Chris Hernan was gonna have this big breakout season gets his injury goes out last year he comes back from that injury decent 31 receptions but you got to look at it the Jets have ranked last the last three years in completion percentage when it comes to their quarterbacks, they suck. I mean, there was 58% completion mm. percentage last year. So Herndon's having these balls fly all over the place like Lufagus on a Saturday morning. And uh, he just doesn't really has a chance. Kirk Cousins has that completion percentage. He is going to put up 40 plus receptions this year. You're right. I, I do play basketball in a, in a group on Saturday mornings. You do. You do. Those are our five. Those are our five secret weapons. Let us know in the comments below. Hashtag 4,000. Who's your secret weapon? Give us somebody we didn't mention. They're not secrets anymore. Cats out of the bag. I hope uh, none of the other teams in NFC North are watching this right now. I think the Bengals are watching this right now and taking notes. Sons of bitches. Well, as long as they subscribe, drop hashtag 4,000. Remember this. Fastest growing mammal is the blue whale. And the slowest growing mammal is the human being.